the deal in Lebanon. We'll be talking to you later about it. Black can shop better than you can. Black comes across better than you. Sure. <laughs> pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation and justice for all. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her. Through the night with the light from my own sweet home. Be seated. Will the members please come to order? And will the members of the audience please remain seated during the briefing? United States, Congressman Bob Stump and Supervisor Holly Atkinson. Good morning. I am the duty officer for this morning's patrol and the following procedures will be in effect during the patrol. Item one, FCCs will be given in numerical sequence, starting with division one and continuing until all units have responded. Item two, one unit only on a 1040. Item three, when making a vacation watch check be sure that all doors and windows of the houses are locked. If you find the window or door unlocked, use the standard operational procedures for this problem. If you find evidence of forced entry, do not enter the house. Call me and I will request that a deputy be sent to your location. Secure the outside of the house. Permit no entry other than authorized personnel. Item four. Give me the details and we will decide what is the best method to solve the problem and act accordingly. Now, I have received a Pontiac Bonneville, four-door sedan, California license plate, license number at this time is unknown. White vinyl roof, five foot eight inches, 150 pounds, 18 to 20 years of age, dark hair wearing in the handcuffing of a subject. Sergeant. Who have previously been qualified in training and qualifying under range for carrying weapons and to be thus qualified to receive this specialized training. In this instance, Sergeant Bros will be my uh, subject, but if you will visualize this table as a hood of a patrol unit, and I will conduct the suspect to the patrol unit, ordering him to place his hands on the hood of the car, spreading his arms out, and spreading eagle. Anytime an arresting officer has a suspect, he places himself in a defensive position. In one of the positions is this. I am placing my foot inside of his foot near his ankle area. If this suspect should in any way Resist a inspection or a <clears throat> search. I am in a position to trip him very easily. He would naturally fall to the ground being off balance. And there are several methods of which then would be employed in handcuffing. At this point, I have no assurance that this suspect does not have concealed weapons or concealed items. Therefore, I will search this suspect by a search known as a pat search. I will check his neck area, his shoulder area, under his arm, down his arm, his chest area, 
paying particular attention to the felt and mid section where it is not uncommon to find concealed weapons. I will there go down this leg and again in the ankle area to carry vulnerable. You may think that I am in a very vulnerable position at this point, but actually, if you'll visualize, I can very easily pull his leg out from under him, therefore throwing him off balance, and again, he'll be on the floor. At this point, I have assured myself that on this side of his body, there are no concealed weapons. <coughs> I will immediately transfer my position, the same defense position, and I will again search this side of his body, the neck area, the arm area, under his arm, his his <laughs> arm, again, the vulnerable spots, under his belt and so forth, also on his leg area. At this point, I have assured myself that this suspect does not have concealed weapons or concealed items. Therefore, I am now in a position to handcuff the suspect. By doing this, I would take one arm, placing it to his back, holding his wrist in an outward position, placing the handcuff on, and I would do the same with the opposite, again noticing that the hand is Thus, this suspect is now in custody, and a normal procedure would then place him in a patrol car and train, ready for transport. <laughs> That concludes this portion of the briefing. Sheriff Jerry Hill will make an introduction. Sheriff? Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, fellow volunteer law enforcement people uh, with the Sheriff's Office. It is my pleasure this morning to have with us a very special guest who has come here to review our volunteer programs in law enforcement. At this point in time, it is indeed uh, an honor for me to introduce to you the President of the United States of America, Ronald Reagan. Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let me tell you, I really enjoyed watching that handcuff demonstration, and I'm more determined than ever to behave myself, especially in Sun City. <laughs> Someone told me about the Sun City Posse's theme song, and I'd like to read a few lines of it because it really does capture the attitude here. So turn on those network cameras because maybe a lot of these people already know it. It's for you I'm saying this. <laughs> When we're called, we want you to know that the Sun City Posse is raring to go. We may be gray, but we still got the stuff to do the job when the going is rough. Well, I know that the residents here are very grateful that you are out there on the streets keeping the crime rate low. And I've just had a demonstration from the sheriff on that also and some figures that show that probably this is the lowest crime rate uh, spot in the United States. I think that the, the people are grateful that you've made Sun City a safer and more reassuring place to live. And of course, all this is a volunteer effort, which makes it even more admirable. America's citizens are more involved today in the safety of their communities than they've been since the days when it was a necessity for us to look after each other. And you are following in that tradition. You are willing to avail yourself or give of yourselves to help others. <laughs> And that truly is the volunteer spirit, which is another way of saying that's the American spirit. We all know how frightening crime is to the old and the young. Yet older Americans also require protection from other aspects of modern life. Remember the terrifying bully called inflation that ate away at pensions and savings, and that was a form of robbery also. Inflation was running in double digits in 1980, and right now it's running at just about for the last six months, less than one half of 1%. And the, it showed its first actual decline uh, below zero level 
in a quarter decline just recently in nearly 25 years. And just a few short years ago, who would have thought, and certainly no one was saying, that we could ever return to the low inflation of the 1950s and the 60s. Well, this morning, just before coming here, I got some figures that are going to be made public and released today, probably already have in the East, and that is the figures on the other part of this recession that is the one that bothers all of us the most, unemployment. Now, I have to confess to you, there are things about the unemployment statistics that still baffle me because they say there's no change in the unemployment percentage rate. But there are 250,000 more people working in April now, then we're working the month before, and since December, there have been 650,000 added to the list of those employed. The recent amendments to the Social Security Act are another way that we're protecting older Americans. This legislation guarantees Social Security will provide a secure and a stable base so that the retired can live in dignity. It assures them that America will keep the promises made in troubled times a half a century ago. And it also protects those who are still working. Their basic human needs must be met with compassion as well as efficiency. This administration is dedicated to the kinds of programs and policies that will allow the vast majority of senior citizens, older Americans, to continue to live independent lives. This is not just a matter of economic common sense. It's a matter of basic human dignity. As the proclamation I'm about to sign states, the future of older Americans should be as sweet as the memories of our youth. I do believe the future of our elderly holds as much promise as the achievement of our past. I had to make a couple of changes in the notes here. The young lady who typed up my notes for me thought she was being tactful and had me referring to them as the elderly, or well, as them instead of us. And, uh, <laughs> I had to change a few theirs to ours. <laughs> but this month, we're recognizing that potential by celebrating Older Americans Month. And that's what the proclamation is. And now I'm going to make it official by signing the proclamation. federal pens will only sign one word. One word. <laughs> they sign and Thank you, one sir. for you. Mr. President, thank you for honoring the Sheriff's Posse of Sun City so completely by coming out and signing the prop proclamation in our behalf here. Uh, at this time, I understand that when you were in Sun City last, which was about 1976, you weren't eligible to become one of our members. <laughs> With perseverance, I made it. Well. <laughs> Uh, I think you have made it uh, in another way also. It's our pleasure as the members of the Sheriff's Posse of Sun City to have you as our honorary member. And to complete that partially, we have this hat. <laughs> In addition, we have one of our intermediate yellow shirts with the emblems on. Thank you. Now, if you are going out on patrol, there are certain things that you must know and must abide by. This book of rules and regulations contains it all. Thank you very much. We also have our record. There's Thank just you. one more thing. I'm sorry I couldn't get your ID card, but I must get clearance from the White House and from the FBI before I can issue it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, now that I'm an honorary 
member of the patrol. I imagine that makes me duty officer for the day. <laughs> so, you're dismissed. <laughs> but let's be careful out there. <laughs>
leadership of Lebanon. And may I add a word or two on behalf of Secretary George Schultz and our Ambassador Phil Habib, whose tireless efforts and dedication to reason have done so much to make this possible. <laughs>
We need spending this strength, not tax increases. Given a personal state in deciding your destiny, and that 